Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening and we are at the end of 2022 so this is the December Q&A. We've had quite a few questions in again and it's brilliant. Thank you very much for anybody who is putting questions there. We do enjoy the fact that you are listening to and watching the videos and getting so much enjoyment from them. Let's go. So somebody has asked me how to winterize a Formium Tenax, Tom Thumb and Black rage. Now Formium tanax have these huge big long uh, leaves and basically what you need to do for the winter is you need to carefully get all the leaves up and gently tie them with some string and then cover the rest of the plant with either horticultural fleece or hessian but if they are in the ground that is fine make sure there is a good mulch around the base of the plant if they are in a container make sure that you insulate the container as well so put bubble wrap or um, more hessian something like that just so that you insulate the container as well as insulating the top of the plant and they should be perfectly good after that Okay, somebody here has said they're living in Australia and um, it's summer over there at the moment. Thank you. Um, they've got poppies, nigella, larkspur, rocket fox leaves, etc. And they love collecting the seed of these and throwing them around and getting new plants to come up. And they want to know if I could give them a list of half hardy, hardy plants that they could do the same with so that they get more plants that are self seeding. Now, I've got to be very, very careful with this because plants that we can grow here in the UK can be plants that are not allowed in. Uh, either the USA or Australia or various plants. So you do need to find out really from a more local garden centre where you would be buying your seed because there are certain things that you are not allowed to grow. However, here's a little list of some of the things that I would recommend. So the, the all of the cosmos, for instance, are brilliant and give you lovely colours. The calendulas, they are great. So those are the marigolds. Things like verbena. So verbena has starter, verbena rigida, verbena bonariensis. But again, please do check that these are not banned plants that you're not allowed to grow. But enjoy growing whatever you are. Um, this is from Andy Gardner and he says, do you have any tips on overwintering perennials and biennials and cuttings that have been taken and they are in a cold greenhouse? Well, this is um, really quite a good thing to do with anyone who's got a cold greenhouse and that is that you need to insulate the cold greenhouse. So you can use bubble wrap, you can use uh, horticultural fleece and you can insulate inside. But do remember when you get fine days make sure there is good airflow within that greenhouse because sealing it all up and then making it so secure and sealed up it gets very very damp in there and it's the dampness that is really bad for your plants in that sort of situation. The other thing that you can do if you've got no heat in there is you can make sure that the plants are not sitting directly onto the ground you've got them raised maybe you can get some insulating material and you can stand them on that. She Sheets of polystyrene, or no, not the best thing, if you've got some old bits of polystyrene that's come in packaging, use that to stand plants up on so they're not on the cold ground. Even on your trays, you can use bubble plastic again, or you can also individually put horticultural fleece over the top of your plants but remember when it is good days and you are wanting to get airflow in there take that fleece off let them get some airflow around them and then recover them up when it's really cold hopefully that will help you out with those plant material now I've got somebody here who wants to know when to sow the seed of ornamental grasses. They're having plenty of success with the biennials and the annual stuff and some of those are self-seeding quite easily for them. So things like nacella, descampsia, they're having no problem with. But what they want to know is how to do things like the penicetums and the miscanthus. Now the problem with the perennial ones is that they don't come from seed as easily as they do by day taking divisions. So my first advice on that would be that you should be dividing those plants and you should be dividing them when they are actively growing, which is in the late spring. 
So that's one thing with the, with the perennial forms. The other thing is collect the seed and sow it directly as soon as you get it and it is not seed that is going to germinate straight away so it is going to need a cold period so you need to sow it maybe put it into a fridge for two three weeks then bring it back out again and then give it heat and that may generate it to come through or if you don't have that uh, possibility sow it leave it in a cold frame over winter so that it gets cold bring it back out in the uh, spring and then you will find that it will probably germinate after a longer period that's the best I can do for you uh, try it and see but division is better with the perennial grasses right here we go oh this is one I love so this is is rooting hormone worth the cost when taking cuttings if you take time to prepare your cuttings properly? Are there any plants which rooting hormone will make a difference? So my response to this is no rooting hormone is not really worth the money. If you have powdered rooting hormone, it's a waste of time. If you have some of the liquids, it's not really worthwhile. But please, please, please do not dispose of any of those sorts of rooting hormones into a water course. So do not wash them down the kitchen sink, for instance, or down the toilet. Don't do it. These rooting hormones get into the watercourses and can cause terrible problems to the frogs, the toads, the fish, anything that lives in that watercourse because it's a hormone and it reacts and it is not good for them. So dispose of properly. Um, the, if you do your cuttings properly, uh, with clean material, with healthy material, and you take them and you stick them into the compost straight away, put them under the right conditions, then no, you really do not need to be using a rooting hormone. Um, is there anything that it helps? Yes, if you're in a commercial environment and you can buy the commercial rooting hormone, then yes for Daphne, maybe yes for Hollies. But even again, most people in the commercial world are trying not to use the hormone because anytime it gets into the water course, it is causing damage. Someone here who is uh, from Scotland and they went away for the whole of October. It's been very cold in that period. They've come back, then it's come back into winter. I'm wondering if it's too late to prune their lavender. Well, the answer to that is basically yes. The only pruning I would do of lavender is say your lavender is somewhere around about 45 centimeters to two foot um, 60 centimeters in height and you've got snow and it is damaging and splitting the plant over then yes give it a tidy up prune but do not do the severe prune now all you're wanting to do is keep it in a state where it's not going to get smashed down by the snow and then it will be fine in the spring when you see the new growth give it a haircut back and it will be absolutely fine Last one for this year um, is somebody took some cuttings of Orangarnum herrenhausen, lovely tough plant, and they did this in September. They've rooted are in seven centimetre pots, and should they protect them from hard frost? This is a tough plant. All of the Orangarnums are really, really tough little um, plants. So basically, you shouldn't need needing to protect them too much. They will go down to minus 10, minus 12 without any problem with they're rooted down in a seven centimeter pot. If you want to protect them from the wet, then that's a slightly different thing. So yes, you could put them into a cold frame. You could cover them over with horticultural fleece, but that is about all you really need to do. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you very much for watching these uh, videos. Please do subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you in 2023.